Okay, Sarah, I told you I wanted to talk to you more about the man who healed the fool. Mm -hmm. We get this from the Gospel of John. And it always hit me. There's a problem here that God would almost tease people. We have the lame, the blind, mm -hmm. all these people who need healing. They're surrounding the pool, waiting for that angel to touch the water. And then only one gets healed. And yeah. it just seems kind of cruel. Like, what about everyone else? Yeah. yeah. That did bother me <laughs> until decades ago, before you were born. I recognized that that was a translation problem. Oh, I see. It's not actually, shouldn't even be what? in the Bible. Oh, man. It's not in the Greek manuscripts. Okay, so then why did they add it? I think that was kind of a superstition, a belief. Someone suggested it in their Bible. They I wrote see. it out. Have you ever written in your Bible? I have, yes, many times. Okay. And so when that happens, and back then all Bibles were handwritten, yeah. and so is this Bible or is that little note there not Bible? And so anyway, I think it got mixed in there. Oh. And consequently, it got into the King James. Let's see. And as a result, there are people who believe that that actually happened. I mean, I read it, I thought it did, but then I found it, no, that's not Bible. That's Let's just see. not God's nature. So then what really happened? Or at least. Good. We'll have a little pause there. And let's see. Um, let me think. Point. I'm going to ask you about, yeah, okay. the translation. Okay. Well, just cut out her last what really happened. And then go to this. Um, let me explain why I think this is so important to understand. Translation matters. Mm -hmm. And I grant we can have differences of opinion about how a word can be translated. You're a fluent Spanish speaker, mm -hmm. so if I say to you, Buenos dias, what does it mean? Good morning. Good morning. Ah, I thought dias meant day. It does. Okay, yeah, you see the, you, okay, you can yeah, have, can okay. Well, in Matthew 5, we have a passage. I'm going to read it to you. Here it is. And I want to tell you how many problems this has caused because of the translation problem here. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, causes her to become an adulteress. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. I have counseled many a person mm -hmm. who were stressed out big time. Many who felt guilt year in, year out over that passage because yeah. they divorced and it wasn't for adultery. And now they're remarried and they think, um, oh, I'm really living in sin. Yeah. I'm just living in sin. So was it just a translation problem again? It's a translation problem but of a different type. It's okay. not which word should we use. It's not that someone stuck in some words. It's this. We don't have an active passive. It's this. Let me do that again. It's it's this. Um, let's see. Um, that's what it's yeah, okay, that's it, okay. Um, yeah, okay. It's this. It's a passive voice okay. in Greek. And we don't have an easy way to translate a passive. And the translators made the verb an active verb. Oh, I see. Let me illustrate. If you read that verse, just mm -hmm. think of me and my wife, okay? It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife, let's suppose suppose I divorce my wife Nita mm -hmm. must give her a certificate of divorce but I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for Marilyn Faith, faithfulness now she's completely innocent yeah. I just am tired of being married to her that's it I just write her a certificate of divorce mm -hmm. causes her to become an adulteress oh, she's not fair? done anything yeah that's not fair at all I can't tell you how many times as I've gone over that passage with a Christian woman, she goes, oh, I've read that passage a hundred times, I never saw that. It's so easy for us to read and miss something so important. So no way is she guilty, no way is she an adulteress if I, for no good reason other than I'm tired of being married, decide to give her a certificate of divorce. She is no, yeah. and the translation problem causes that. And yet, sometimes people have attitudes about translations I don't think they should have. They are so committed to their translation. The one time I've ever had someone walk out of my group, they were angry at me. 
as is, I shared this, mm -hmm. this message. I didn't know she loved the King James so much that speaking against the King James, I wasn't speaking against the King James, it's a good trans, it was a good translation in its day. But there are problems. Mm -hmm. King James, for example, did not believe in immersion. And so he said to the translators, you cannot take that Greek word, baptizo, mm -hmm. you cannot translate it. Oh, you have to wow. transliterate it. You can't do anything that changes church practice. And so here's a word, we know what it means. Greek documents are very plain. A ship, when it sinks, is baptized. Oh, wow. And yet he says, transliterate it. So, so that we don't eliminate sprinkling. I see. In favor of immersion. Wow. 